right, we'll first up, I finally get to have a, a fish after all, getting all that prep ready. And what I've been given the job doing is having a little dob. I want to dob some bread, just to see if there's any fish sitting about, so that they're not quite ready for feed, it's still pretty chilly. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning, so there's a little chance they won't have woken up yet. So by dobbing, hopefully I'll catch a few fish that are just sitting along that far bank that don't quite want to feed. I can just pick a few off and give me a little head start on Andy. For me dobbing my rigs, they could not be more simple. In all honesty, this rig, this is my dobbing rig that I've just whipped up my box. I've been using this exact same rig all winter. I think this exact one has been going since about December. That they're that versatile and that simple that by just simply changing my hook length every go, they, they last me all winter. There's no need for messing about. So to make me dobbing rig, again, couldn't be more simple. I've simply got a 4B12s wire stem float, nice slim wire stem float. That's going to help me keep it in all the little nooks and crannies that I drop me uh, bread into. And that's simply shotted with a bulk right underneath me float. All this is about is stability. The top end of me float is going to keep it nice and stable and keep it right where I put it in all them little holes. The bottom end, that's the uh, presentation side of the rig, if you like. That's going to make my bread sink really, really nice and naturally. And because of that, I've simply got four number 12 shot spread in the bottom half of the rig. I used to do this a little bit different. I used to just have two number 12s spread through my entire rig. But what I tend to find, I kept missing a lot of bites. I was getting little funny bites because my rig was a little bit too slack down the bottom end because there was not enough weight down there. So by just incorporating a few more shots, and I may even tight them, tighten them up once I start catching a few, it shows my bites up a little bit better, but at the same time, it still gives me a lovely natural fall of that bread when I'm fishing a nice fluttery piece of bread through the water to give the fish plenty of time to see it. So above the rig, so the beauty of these rigs is the versatility. With having a, probably a rig of, I'd say the full length of the rig is probably around five foot. So that, that lets me fish this rig from anywhere from four and a half foot all the way down to 10 inches, which could be tight against the far bank or down the middle. It all depends on where them fish want to be sat on the day, which is a few tricks in, in finding those fish, which I'll go into in a minute. But this rig allows me to, to cover either of the areas of my peg, the deeper water or the shallow water, without the need for setting up loads of rigs for fishing such a simple bait. So by having a load of line above it, so I can move that up and down and get it perfectly set for how I want it to be on the day, the right depth for how the fish want to feed. The only shot I have above my float, I simply use one back shot, one number eight back shot right in the middle of my rig, and that's going to help sink this little bit of line to get it out the way, which could be a problem when using big long lengths of line in between your float and your pole, they can get caught up in the wind quite a lot and pull all over the place and, and spoil your presentation. So by just by having one number eight, maybe two number eights on a windy day, that helps to sink my line in between my float and my pole and just keeps my uh, float right where I want it in them little holes that I keep talking about. Uh, line and elastic wise, I keep things again really simple. I only use when I'm fishing for carp and F1s, which is in this case a meta pool at Erinbrook. I like our six to nine, which gives me a bit of poke so I can land any bigger fish. I'm likely to hook some, some proper fish up to 10 pound on this method. So six to nine allows me to land them. I've got an 015 main line, again, nice and durable, lasts me all winter. And I've got a little tiny hook length of 012, again, suited to the fish I'm going to catch. On, on a quick note about hook lengths, it's very important to match the, um, the strength of your hook length. So in this case, 012, which is around three pound, to the elastic that I'm using. The main line is nearly irrelevant. That just needs to be something nice and durable, but something that's not too thick that doesn't catch in the wind. But by matching my hook length to my elastic, there's no way this elastic can overpower my hook length, causing breakages that shouldn't happen. So to finish my rig, I've simply got, I think in this case, I've got a little size 18 Guru Pellet hook, which is a very, very light gauge wire hook, which it's strong enough for me to land a few carp, but without going too heavy that it's going to interfere with the fall of my bread through the water, making my bread look unnatural because it's sinking too quick. But other than that, it, it pretty much doesn't get more simple than that. Nice simple rig with a bulk and a few droppers, it's going to allow me to fish my bread just how I want it. Right, so quickly before I have a dob, what I want to do is just have a quick check on the depth of my plummet. In all honesty, this is something that I don't like doing. If I knew the venue well enough, then I'd feel confident enough to go straight over there at a depth that I felt was the right depth, knowing that it was, say, three foot, off the, uh, three foot on the far bank, I'd go in at two and a half foot if I knew my venue well enough. So in this case, because I've not been on this peg, what I'm going to do is just whack my plummet on, and really carefully, the last thing I want to do is drag me plummet all over me swim and potentially uh, spook those fish that could be sitting in shoals. So I just want to ship out and just get a rough idea of the depths that I'm looking at, both on the far bank and where that slope is that's going to drop into the deeper water. So I'm, let's see, I'm just going to ship out. I'm not going to move my floats left and right too much. 
I'm going to go to the joining me float, which is pretty much on the um, on the edge of that grass. And I'm just going to have a look at the depth is. So you can see there, I'm just over depth. Yeah, touching that far bank. If I keep dragging it along, it's in a bit of a snag. If I keep dragging it along, it's the same. So I've got a lovely shelf, probably, I'm going to assume I've got it pretty much all the way along that slope, but I need to be shallower to fish off bottom. And then by coming back towards me, if I go to the middle of my 30 metre section, I can see that it drops off considerably there, probably down to about five foot. So that tells me that if I'm fishing anywhere on my 30 metre section, I'm safe fishing anywhere, uh, anywhere less than four and a half foot, and now I'll be on, off the bottom, which is where I want to present my bed, my, bre my bread. When I go to the far bank, then because I've got that rig set at, that's around three foot now, I need to fish that at two and a half foot and less to be suspending that bread just off the bottom, which is where I find that the fish prefer to sit in the cold and where I'm most likely to get a bite. So I'm going to whiz him back. Like I say, I know that was pretty much how deep it is touching the whole of that bank all the way along my peg. So I'm going to move the whole of my bulk. I like my bulk to be right underneath my shot. I'm going to move that down a good 10 inch. I'm going to move my float right on top of my bulk. So now I know that I can, by fishing at that depth, which is probably two foot, I can fish the entire length of my far bank without the risk of laying line on the bottom and potentially missing bite. So that's going to cover me dobbin rig and that's what I'm going to start with. Right, just before we have a quick fish, what I want to do is just make sure my bread's right. So I'm literally going to get me slice of bread straight out of my packet. So ain't no messing about steaming it or anything like that. Straight out the pack, give it a little flatten in between my palms, but not really squishy, just give it a nice little, little compression so I get a nice tight bit of bread there that's not too fluffy. And then I'm going to choose which size punch I want to fish. So in this case, for this venue, I know that it's 99% uh, F1s and carp. There's very, very few silverfish that are going to be a problem. So for me, my preferred size punch is always, always going to be a 7 mil. I have more confidence in this punch than any other item of kit in my, in my uh, tackle box. I've used this to win millions and millions of matches up and down the country. It's frightening how good this punch is in this size. But I'll also have a 10 mil punch just in case I'd need to avoid little fish and I need a slightly bigger bait to stand out for a few carp. But so what I want to do, just to hook my bait, in fact, I'm going to do it with a large punch just so it's a bit more visible. Simply by compressing my bread, yeah, I'll get a nice punch out of there. That's all I want to do. No double punch or anything like that. I want to compress my bread right down, really pushing into the punch. And then for me, I've seen lots of different ways of hooking it, but I like hooking it really traditionally. Like how you would a bread punch and just scooping it up through the slot, hooking the, hooking the bread. But then once my bread's actually on, I'm just going to re-hook that. Once my bread's actually on, I give it a really firm squeeze in between my two fingers, like really compress that bread again. And what I end up with is a really tight piece of bread with my hook point showing. Because it's amazing just how quickly that bread swells and become very soft and can come off easily. So it's simply through shipping out between when I drop my rig in to getting to where I'm fishing itself can cause bread to come off if it's not been compressed and if you're using a poor quality bread that's not tacky enough. But say to begin with, that's simply all I need. It's going to create a nice, lovely, fluffy hook bait by the time I get to where I drop it in. But at the same time, it's nice and durable. And I'm going to be able to lift up two or three times, even miss a bite or two, but still have my bread intact because it's been compressed and it's going to stay on my hook for as long as possible.